Congressman Sam Graves joins us, and a number of topics we want to touch on today. And I guess the first thing we need to talk about is the budget. Where are we in the process now? Where are we headed in the coming weeks or so? Well, we're trying to come up with a compromise. There's obviously a lot of issues out there that we have to um, get solved that, that are controversial, you know, whether that's DACA or, uh, um, you know, the chip funding and everything. You know, we're working on that. I think we'll see a short-term um, extension just to get us through uh, the next couple of weeks to give us by a little bit of time to work on these larger um, issues that are out there. And, and uh, I think that's what will happen. It will probably happen um, – or Friday or on Friday when, when the deadline is. But I'm pretty optimistic we'll be able to come up with something and at least give us a little bit more time to um, to negotiate. The, the CHIP program is one that's obviously very important to a lot of your constituents. Where do you see that heading? I think it'll be funded. You know, it's, it's, it's not one of those things that we're going to do away with or we're going to slide on. Um, I think it's fairly bipartisan. You know, it, it's important to uh, to these children and to a lot of folks out there who need this and depend on those dollars. So it's, uh, uh, you know, definitely, uh, it, you know, it's important. So I, I just don't see it not being, um, you know, taken care of. I know there's a lot of folks out there that, that want to see that and, and you know, will uh, extend it through this short-term extension and then come up with a, uh, uh, with a fix, um, you know, in the negotiation process. But that, that's really not the big issue. The bigger issue, you know, is with immigration – and, uh, you know, obviously defense spending and, and things like that. Um, CHIP just isn't, uh, uh, you know, I don't think it's going to be that heavy a lift. How about DACA? What's going to happen there? I know it's got a lot of play nationally lately. It, it has. You know, and the bottom line is, at least the way I look at it, this is a national security issue. And, and uh, we just can't have this open flow uh, immigration that we're seeing. And be able to, chain immigration is one of the worst. I've been calling for the elimination of that. It, you know, the name chain immigration has come along later. The biggest problem is, is, is what we've always seen, and that is allowing people to come in, whether it's through a visa lottery program or the visa diversity program, then they're able to sponsor their, um, you know, family members. And that's what chain migration is, or immigration is, and, and it's wrong. We have a serious security issue. We've had terrorists come into this country by being sponsored um, from other individuals um, that have entered through one of these programs, and we've got to lock that down. Uh, you know, the fence is something that I've also called on for for years and years um, since I've been in Congress, I believe in it. I think we need a physical barrier uh, at the border to give our law enforcement folks that opportunity or something to actually patrol, something that is there that deters um, illegals from coming across uh, that border. And I think it's vitally important. You know, we have to lock this issue down. It, the illegal immigration is just that. It's illegal. And those folks that are here illegally, um, they are uh, breaking the law. And, uh, and we need to deal with it. And it's something that's important to me and a lot of people. How do we get Democrats and Republicans to work together and get an answer? Well, you know, it all comes down to, you know, compromise and, and working those things out and, and uh, it, you know, and, and dealing with the negotiations. And negotiation is no different than anything else, whether you're buying a car or you're, you're you know, negotiating a, a, a new home or, or whatever it is. You you, it's give and take, and that's what's taking place right now and will continue to take place over the next couple of weeks, and ultimately we'll come to uh, a resolution. We always do. And I think we've seen where the president's pretty good at this. Just look at the tax reform package. Oh, absolutely. The president's really good at it, and, uh, and it's something that he is working on. He takes the security of the nation very important, or, uh, you know, very seriously, uh, as I do, and, and uh, you know, he keeps that always in the back of his mind. And and, uh, and I'm going to as well. But, but I think we'll, we'll get something negotiated out. We always do. Congressman, what are businesses in your district saying now that the tax reform package has been signed into law? I'm very happy. Um, you know, and, and everyone out there is going to see the impacts of this. Um, starting in February, you're going to see more money um, in paychecks uh, as a result of uh, the tax policy. You know, if you're in, in um, a small business, you know, and, and you don't do your taxes or won't do your taxes for a farmer, uh, that doesn't do his taxes until next um, year. You're going to see those uh, those provisions hit then. But this is going to be good for everybody. It's good for businesses, and that ultimately allows businesses to do just exactly what they're doing. They're giving bonuses. They're increasing employment. Um, obviously, you know their workers are going to see more dollars in their uh, in their uh, uh, paychecks. And then you know for agriculture, which is the most important, the largest industry in my district. Um, Increasing that threshold on inheritance tax is a major plus. Um, in my opinion, death should not be a taxable event, and it should be done away with completely. But what we got is a major step 
uh, in the right direction. And that's going to make sure that these families um, are not going to have to sell off part of the farm or sell off the business to pay for the inheritance tax um, that's associated with it, that the government seems to think it's owed um, because you pass away. Uh, so that's a major, major plus. And we're hearing all kinds of, of uh, good comments and, and, uh, and support and very happy uh, folks out there that, that we were finally able to get this done. How about doing away with the individual mandate? How big is that? It's pretty big. Um, you know, that was one of the things that I fought and, and, uh, and a lot of folks fought from the very beginning was the fact that you are forcing an individual to buy something, to buy insurance, um, you know, without any regard whatsoever to, um, to the, you know, their decision. Um, and it is their decision. Um, that individual mandate is a, you know, is a major thing, and it's something that, that uh, I thought should have been struck down uh, early on. Um, it wasn't, uh, and now we were able to uh, uh, to eliminate that. And that's just one of, another one of the aspects, um, you know, within this bill that uh, that was good. It was a very good bill overall. How about the infrastructure package? I know a lot of folks are thinking about moving on to that. Where are we? What would you like to see? Well, we are moving on, and, and I'm actually right in the middle of that, uh, being chairman of the Highway and, and Transit Committee. Um, we're waiting on the president to give uh, you know, his guidance on what he would like to see uh, in the bill, then the House is going to move forward very quickly. Um, I think we'll see that guidance from the White House coming out uh, the last week in January, maybe first week in, in February. You know, some of the issues coming down uh, are going to be, you know, how big is the package uh, going to be, how, how we're going to pay for it, where the pay-fors are going to come from, you know, how we distribute those dollars. There's going to be um, sewer systems, water systems, highways, bridges, aviation, rail, you name it, all infrastructure is going to be uh, involved in this uh, in this package. So um, we're waiting on the administration to give us their uh, thoughts and ideas, and then we'll move rapidly in the House and in committee to uh, get a bill to the floor. What are your thoughts? How quickly can something like this get to the president's desk? Um, we should be able to do it. Um, best case scenario, you could do it uh, you know, within uh, two or three weeks. That's not going to happen. Um, just simply because of the, uh, uh, you know, folks that are going to want this or that or whatever, the negotiation that will take place. But I would like to see something done uh, in the next couple of months and, and on the president's desk signed into law and moving forward so we hit the construction season. All right. And finally, how about for you as we go through 2018? Is there a piece of legislation you would really like to see move through? Well, you know, there's a lot of things, and obviously my – my bailiwick is within the transportation industry. We've got a lot of work to do. We've got to figure out how we fund the, uh, the highway bill moving forward. Um, we have a fuel tax, which is very regressive because we have so many vehicles on the road that simply don't pay any tax whatsoever uh, to use the road, You know, whether it's an electric car or, or a hybrid. Um, we need to be recovering those dollars, and I would like to see us switch more to a vehicle miles traveled and away from fuel tax. I want to eliminate the fuel tax altogether, and, and that's something I'm going to be working on uh, and very involved with that and, and, uh, and defense. You know, I'm very involved with the uh, uh, Armed Services Committee and make sure that we keep this country safe and making sure that our men and women in uniform have absolutely everything they need um, to do their job and to keep us safe here at home. And uh, so those are two things, uh, broad areas, obviously, I'm going to be working on. we got about a minute left. How concerned are you at this point about North Korea? Um, I'm always concerned about countries like North Korea just simply because you have an individual over there who, um, who has no, uh, no interest in taking care of his citizens and taking care of their country. He just wants to be – he's like a child – that wants to be recognized, he's, you know, that wants attention. And, uh, and those are the most dangerous individuals of all. And then you throw that, you know, throw into the equation, you know, an individual that's working on nuclear capability and a means to deploy that and threatening uh, their neighbors and, and our allies, it, it causes a problem. Um, I'm optimistic that we're going to ultimately be able to handle this um, in a diplomatic way. And, and seeing that South and North Korea are now in discussions and talking, that's a very, very good sign. So, uh, hopefully it's all going to work out, but I'm always concerned about them. All right. Hey, thank you, Congressman. Have a great day. Thank you. Congressman Sam Graves has joined us in Quicksland this morning. Joined us in Quicksland this morning.